What is going on good people? Today we have an extremely cool tutorial because we are going to learn how to take custom text files, pass them through GPT, OpenAI's GPT-3, and ask questions of those text files specifically. Now, the reason why this is so cool is because we're going to use your private and local text files. This means that you can upload anything that ChatGPT can't already see, like your personal documents or notes or whatever, and you can actually go ahead and ask questions for these. Now, the reason why I love this so much is because you can see how this is the starting point of some really cool capabilities. Today, it's just text files that we're going to go over, but you could imagine connecting your Google Drive your Google Slides, your text messages, your WhatsApp, whatever you may want, and it can interpret that information for you and start to give you results back. So let's jump through this example here. I have a, uh, a fun one for us today, okay? So what we're actually gonna be looking at is we're gonna be looking at a series of Paul Graham essays. And if you don't know Paul Graham, he is a famous entrepreneur here in the States, and he is also an author. He has a bunch of essays. He has something like over 200, so I, I, I web scraped these. And you can see that what they look like is basically just pieces of text. And so here, it's, it's not formatted the best way, but he has a date up at the top and uh, he has his text down below. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna ask questions using against these essays using chat GPT. And I'm gonna do that via the LangChain library. So you can see here we have the essays. What I went ahead and did is I just took a subset of those essays. So I took a, um, Okay, well, it's not, it's not being nice to me. I took a, a subset of those essays and I just have uh, the smallest ones right here only because it gets kind of uh, data intensive and heavy and it can take a while, which I don't want to do for you. So we're going to take these essays, like, the, okay, well, that's, that's a bad one, um, these short essays here and run them through. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we take a look at our IPython notebook here, the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to import a whole bunch of things. Now, LangChain has some very helpful uh, packages that um, um, help with this. Um, we're going to get some open AI embeddings. Now, I'm going to go over what embeddings are in another tutorial, but think of them as a way to compress data so that we can go and search our text a lot easier later on. Um, we're going to get Chroma, which is part of our vector store, which is where you store the embeddings. We're going to get a character splitter, which is going to split these documents up into individual chunks. We're going to get our vector database question answer uh, from LangChain, which is the easy way to go ahead and question these things. And then we're going to get um, a directory loader. Now, what's really cool is in document loaders, you can uh, load a whole bunch of things and they're adding new support every day. A directory loader is how we're going to load a directory of files. You can also do just text files if you want. Also going to import some magic, some OS, and some NLTK um, for some supplemental help here. Now, I will say, as I was doing this right before this video, I had a heck of a time making sure that all my packages were up to date. So if you have problems, try upload or try loading any of these sub packages because I ran into issues for all these. And as always, make sure that your open AI key is uh, set and ready to go. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, instantiate our loader. Name loader is not defined. That is great. Let me get rid of that. And let me first load my packages here. Um, so we're, let's load this directory loader. And the, where I'm pointing it at is I'm pointing it at for this IPython notebook, the relative path to the Paul Graham essay small. Now this glob thing means that you're, or you're only gonna take the .txt files. Now, if you're using an IPython mo notebook, it might throw some other files in there, which is causing some problems, but that'll be your fixer for you. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to load these documents. So here we just kind of got them ready and staged them. Here we're actually going to load them. So if I were to, let's take a look at what this looks like. If we're going to load this, you can see that these are the individual uh, essays that were written, which is cool. So it's a whole bunch of text, but this text is still too long and we need to do something about that. So we're going to uh, instantiate or initialize a character splitter. And a character splitter is just going to chunk up our essay into meaningful parts. Now, I, wait, I heard the way Harrison described this was, imagine if you had a page and there was way too many characters on it. Well, if you're going to split that page up, you might split it up by chapters. Well, if there's too many characters for the chapters, you might split it up by paragraphs, you might split it up by sentence, or you might even split it up by word uh, if you really need to go down that deep. But here, we're just going to do a chunk size of 1000 and we're not going to overlap our text because that's not important for our use case here. Let's go ahead and run that. And then, so this uh, instanti or initialized the character splitter. Now we're actually gonna go do the character splitting. So that was fairly, oh, shoot, no, 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 no. That's not good. 
Um, that was fairly quick. And so let's take a look at what this looks like. And it's the same thing, but these uh, these documents are gonna be a whole lot smaller now because they're only gonna be at the thousand character limit. So now we have individual chunks of documents that we can go ahead and then reference. Cool. And then the next thing that we need to do is we need to create embeddings of these. And embeddings means that you're gonna change it from a string and you're gonna turn it into a vector space. And that is just a fancy word of a list of values that represent different, um, that represent the different documents inside of your um, documents you're looking at. And so right now we just in, uh, initialized our embeddings. And now what we're actually going to, now what we're going to go do is we're going to use Chroma here and we're going to say, Hey, we need you to make a, a doc or a vector store from these texts using this embedding uh, engine. So let's go ahead and run that. And now what this is doing is this actually going and querying the OpenAI API and there's an embeddings API. And so you can go ahead and search that embeddings API open AI. And so you can look at embeddings here and you can read up more about it. The, um, the interesting part, well, there's pricing associated to these, but you can see here what it's gonna return is it's basically gonna return a vector. Um, which is just a list of a bunch of numbers, but you can go and check that out on your own time. Um, okay, cool. So it did this for us. And unfortunately, uh, we can't see this right now. I wish, we could see, I wish there was an easier way to see this. Um, if anybody finds out a way to see the actual vectors in there, let me know. Okay, cool. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna initialize our model. And so we're gonna pass it um, our language model, which is gonna be OpenAI. And we're going to do a chain type of stuff. This means what it's going to do is it's going to find the most relevant prompts from all the ones that we just broke up, and it's going to stuff those into OpenAI's prompt. Now, this isn't so bad because you only make one API call and you only and you do the prompt there once. But imagine you had a really, really long um, set of documents. What you may want to do is you may want to pass those to OpenAI, have them refine a little bit, and then use that output to pass it again and then refine even more and look for your answer. I'll encourage you to go look at other different other chain types on Langchain's documentation. Um, if you want a video on that, let me know. I'm happy to step through it. And then here's the really important part because this is the information. We're going to pass our docs that we just made from Chroma and we're going to pass those in as a vector store into here. So we'll save that into QA. Now we did all that work, got our data prepped, got everything ready just to do this one thing here. So if you remember, we had our series of essays that we wanted to go and query a question against. Now I'm finally ready for a question. And I know that in the essays, there speaks about a fellow named McCarthy who came up with the Lisp language. Now, what's really cool is I can go ahead and run this. What did McCarthy discover? And then in the background, um, Langchain is gonna go query OpenAI with our per personal private docs that we just uploaded, and we're gonna get some answers. McCarthy discovered how to use a handful of simple operators and notation for functions to build a whole programming language, which he called Lisp. That's pretty cool. So say this was even more private data that wasn't on the web anywhere, you can go ahead and use that in OpenAI to go get your own questions. Now, I wanted to show you one more cool thing, which is when you can start to attribute sources to your answer. Now, the way that this works is, remember we split our um, documents into chunks. Well, what Langchain will help do is it will say, hey, these chunks were most helpful in getting you the answer. And then once you have those chunks, you can start to understand why it used what it did and the information that it pulled. So I'm gonna pull the same exact um, function call that we did up above. The only difference is I'm gonna say return source documents equals true. And in this case, when you do that, there's a little bit of a different syntax to, uh, to doing the query, but we still have the same query here. And I'm gonna say um, using the vector uh, dbqa that we had above, here's the query and I'm gonna store that in a result. So it's doing the same thing. It's gonna go get those. Great. And so if I look at the result, um, it is not the same thing, but it's a little bit different than what we had above because there's a little bit of prob probabilistic, uh, probabilistic uh, outputs here. But the really cool part is when you say source documents. And so now I just asked it for the source documents and it it's telling me that, hey, these are the documents that we used in order to answer your question. Now, let me convince you about that. If I'm looking, I'm searching for McCarthy, you can see here that these different documents talk about McCarthy. Now we uploaded like 20 essays, maybe not 20, maybe 10 essays, but it knew that these were the best ones to go ahead and pick, which is pretty cool. So um, that is where you can show your source documents. Now, I hope you had an awesome time with this one. 
please let me know what other videos you'd like to see, but you can see how this would be the very beginning of some really cool functionality. Now in other videos, we're gonna show how you can upload different data, whether it be Google Docs, whether it be Notion, whether it be um, Excel spreadsheets, whatever the heck you'd like in order to answer your own questions from there. Thanks crew.